Hi everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us today for our 3D Event Designer webinar, Event Planning Software Made Simple. I'm Krista McLoom, one of the co-founders of EventsClick and our 3D Event Designer software. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Everyone is currently placed on mute and will remain so during the course of the webinar. Should you have any questions, please type them into the chat box you see at the bottom of your screen, and we'll be sure to address it either during the webinar or at the end of the webinar when we'll open it up for questions. I see a few more people joining right now, so again, everyone, thank you so much and welcome today to Events Clicks and Event Planners Association's webinar on the 3D Event Designer. So let's get started. Today in this webinar, we're going to start with an overview of the Event Planners Association, also known as EPA, followed by what the 3D Event Designer is, and then we'll go into a live demo showing the 3D Event Designer in use. At the end of the demo, I'll show you a few event design samples, discuss how a venue can get their event spaces added to the 3D Event Designer, as well as how vendors can get their products added, and I'll close it out with discussing our lead capture widget, a feature of ours I'm very excited about, as it helps each of you as a business owner convert more of your website visitors to leads. So now I'm going to hand it off to Kim Sullivan, Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer of Event Planners Association, to give you an overview of EPA and our strategic partnership. So Kim? Thank you, Kristen. Uh, as Kristen said, my name is Kim Sullivan. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer with the EPA, and I want to thank you for being with us today. We are so excited to have Events Click on board, and uh, the reason is that our goal is to empower small business owners with tools that they need to build profitable and successful businesses. And so with that in mind, we've been working with Events Click to uh, provide a, a unique and um, uh, profitable service for you. It's going to help you in a lot of ways, and uh, Kristen's going to go through that. So, with all of that in mind, I'm delighted to present our newest strategic partner, Events Click. And Kristen McClune is the president and co founder of Events Click, and is going to take it from here. She's going to share the ins and outs of this incredible 3D event designer application and how it works. Kristen. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Kim. Yes, and as a follow-up to our strategic partnership, I'll give you kind of just a real quick background on what Events Click is. And it's actually a website, a place for event professionals that provides tools for event design and event planning. Um, the 3D Event Designer is our main design tool, as Kim mentioned, and it's a web-based tool that allows event professionals to easily plan, design, and visualize in 3D any type of event online. So what does that exactly mean? It means you can easily create event floor plans in 2D, click a button and walk through it in realistic 3D, and you can even email the design to your clients so they can get that same interactive experience you're getting while designing. So enough about the background. Let's actually dive into the live demo. I'm sure you're all excited to see that part. So this is the opening screen you see when you first launch the 3D Event Designer. This first button you see right here is where you can select a pre-model floor plan. This is where you see venues we work with getting their floor plans included. So I'll go ahead and click on this button and just show you a few. And I'll actually just take you into one so you can see the full realism of it. And then I'll show you the other buttons and how you can actually create a design for yourself. So I'm actually opening up the Casa Del Mar Ballroom. They're located in Santa Monica, California. Here's the 2D floor plan, and this is where you'll actually end up dragging and dropping in all products to create that design that you need to be able to convey to your clients. If I click this 3D view, view button, you can actually see I can walk through it as if I'm physically standing in the room. I can move around it in full 360-degree 3D. And it's always amazing how real this looks. You're, you're really standing in it. So I'm going to go back to the 2D view and back to our opening screen. I just showed you what it looks like. 
from um, a pre-modeled venue floor plan. So this next icon you see here, this is where, let's say your venue is not included in a 3D event designer, you can actually create it yourself with the venue's dimensions. And I'm going to jump into that after I show you this last one. This My Floor Plans, it'll save all of your event designs. So you can always go back and reference them. You can see I have a Pro Planner account, and I've created virtually an unlimited number. You can even create templates and reopen them from here. So you don't have to create floor plans from scratch each time, especially if it's a venue you consistently work at. So once again, I'm going to hit the back button. We're at our opening screen, and we're going to go into this second option that many of you will be using to design your client's events. This is a create your own floor plan. I click on it, and what I come to here before I actually get fully into the application is the option to select whether it's an indoor event space, an outdoor event space, or keep in mind, you can even create a combination of both. So these first three options you'll see, they're indoor. If your event space is a unique shape, it doesn't matter. You can go ahead and select one here, and we'll change the, the layout of it, the size, once we're actually in the application. This last option, this outdoor space, this is actually where you can go ahead and input dimensions, and it can be a grass area, it can be cement, it can be brick, you name it. So for demo purposes, I'm going to just start with a generic rectangular ballroom. You can see right here where I can input my dimensions. And I'm just going to go ahead and select dimensions of 40 feet by 40 feet. And again, the room height, I'm just going to select 12. And just as a reminder, because I get this question so many times, if you input your dimensions and then you go and look at it at a later time after you've been designing and you realize the floor plan the venue gave you, their PDF is just slightly different, don't worry. You can always change it later. So I'm going to hit this edit dimension to open it. And there it is. I have my 2D floor plan. It was as simple as that. I'm going to go and show you this 3D view now just so you can see what the default colors are. And I'm going to walk through it a little bit, and you can see there's gray walls, wood floor, different ceiling. Well, let's go ahead and start actually customizing this how you would if you were designing this yourself. So again, I went back to the 2D view. I can always zoom in on my floor plan, and I really like to do that personally when I'm designing. I like to get a close-up view of what I'm doing. And as you can see, I just zoomed in. You can actually see my dimensions here of this wall. It's 40 feet. And let's say I need to change the dimension. I actually realized it was a little larger. I dragged the circle wall handle, and it allows me to change the dimension. Another thing that I frequently get asked is, well, my room, what if it's an odd shape? Let's say it has five walls, maybe eight walls. It has a sunroom. You name it, very, very easy to change. You simply you see how I can highlight this wall. I want to highlight the edge of it, the thin blue line. I click on it, and it opens up the wall attributes. You have the ability to completely remove the entire wall, split this wall, which I'm going to do in just a second. I can even change the texture of the wall if need be, or the colors. And you're going to see these features over and over again throughout this live demo, as it's used not only for constructing the room, but also with each individual product you put or furniture decor item you put into the workspace. So I can select from any color I see here, or I can even input my own color hex code if I have a specific color I need to convey. So for this sake, I'm going to go ahead and split the wall, and you can see another wall handle just got created, and that allows me to move it. So I'm going to center my floor plan, so you can actually see now how I have a fifth wall. And it was very simple. Everything's all clicking and dragging and dropping. We try and make this as simple as possible for everyone to do. We know your time is valuable, being um, in the event industry. So the next thing that I want to show you guys is how do you change maybe the flooring color or the texture? Same thing with the walls or the ceiling. You go over to this Rooms and Walls tab, and right here, this is where I see New Boundary. This is because this is the only space I have in my workspace right now. So I'm going to select it and edit it. Because I'm going to actually add on a room, let's say a foyer, um, as well for cocktail hour, and let's say an outdoor space, if you're designing a ceremony, you might need that outdoor space. I'm going to rename this room just so I don't get them confused. So I'll name this fall room. And as you can see here, I can manipulate and change every aspect of this floor plan. 
starting with the ceiling, I can go ahead and change it if I don't want that texture. I'll change it to a different one. I can actually change the color as well. But so let's say that's not the ivory color I was looking for. All I have to do is I simply input a color hex code too, and I'm showing you both the ways. You can do it any way you see fit, and hit enter. Wall material, if I want it to be solid, very simple, can do that. And if I want the color to match my wall, or match my ceiling, and put it the same way. Flooring, exact same way as well. I'm going to go ahead and select a dark wood for demo purposes. And height, remember how I said before, not only if you don't know, let's say, the height of the room or the dimensions, you can always change it once you're inside. This is where you do that. I can always highlight this and then put whatever dimensions in are that are the correct ones that it needs to be. And once I'm good with that, I hit simply hit apply. So let's go ahead and look at just the very simple changes we already made. And you can see already that I'm customizing my room to what that venue space is going to look like. So again, once again, let's go back into the 2D view. You're probably thinking, what comes next? It's completely up to you. Really, creativity is endless. Um, we can go ahead and start with, since we're on the Rooms and Walls tab, if I have another room I want to add, again, a foyer, all I do is click and drag it in. Like I said in the beginning, everything is drag and drop. I select this little wall handle, too, if I need to resize it. And if you want to change the dimensions and look at it, just zoom into your floor plan. Very easy to do. If I need to move my entire floor plan, maybe I want to add an outdoor space at the bottom, click anywhere in your floor plan, and I'm just going to move my mouse up. It allows me to then see the space I need. I'm going to go to my freeform area. Again, I'm trying to create an outdoor space. This could be for any part of the event. I like to use this a lot for outdoor wedding ceremonies. I click on the freeform area, and this looks a little different than dragging in a room. All I do is just keep clicking my mouse to make whatever shape I want. And once I'm done, I hit escape, and it closes it. But again, everything works the same way. Select the wall handles, and it drags it. So. As you can see, getting the floor plan is very, very simple. One thing that you always want to make sure you do is to name your floor plan. So I'm actually going to name this. Let's name this ETA event, and I want to hit save. You never want to lose your work, especially if you're in a time crunch trying to get a client a design. So the next item that I personally like to do, and again, none of these have to be done in any specific order, is under the products tab, I'm going to actually start dragging in um, the doors, the windows, the room construction to start really making this look like a ballroom. So here you go. Let me just explain really quick these three drop downs. We have it always starting on all states and all regions. That's where you get your vast majority and you see all the products that are in the 3D event designer. But we also work with vendors and get their products specifically included in here. So if they only offer a product in one location, that's when you'll want to select the state and the region. Um, so that's what those are for. And I'm going to go to the third drop down. These are actually the categories of all of our products. We make it very easy to search through. So I'm going to go down to room construction, click on it. And I'm just going to scroll down, and I'm going to choose a door I like. I'm going to do a double door. And doors, they snap easily onto the walls. I just drag my mouse, and I can change it to whichever way the door actually opens in that venue. I'm going to zoom in for you so you can see it. And again, here's my door. What you see, there's a few yellow lines. And let me zoom in a little closer so you get a real good view of it. If I click on my door and Watch this a little closely because this is going to work the same for every single product you put into your workspace. This curved line, it allows you to rotate any product. This little yellow triangle you see, it points to the front of an item, especially helpful when you're dragging and dropping in chairs into the workspace and you need to figure out where's the front, how do I place it correctly into the floor plan. This last item, this plus button, you click on it and it just like the walls, with products, it opens up the product attributes. So what you see here is I can always resize any product in the workspace. So some people have said to me before, Kristen, I only see one type of door. I only see one type of shivari chair. You name it. We always allow for have a generic one on there because you can always resize everything to fit your needs. And same with colors. 
Some products, like you see here, only offer a select color range. And other products in the drop-in, like linen, you're going to have an unlimited spectrum of colors that you can select from. And this last item, this table numbers feeding chart item label, this is used for not only table numbers, but I can even assign this and say entryway door, entryway, and just so everyone knows where people would walk in through, and you have that there. So capability is fully endless. Same thing, I can go ahead and drag and drop in windows if I want. But I think you guys kind of get the idea with the room construction. So I'm going to actually go ahead and drag and drop in some tables and chairs so you can really see how this works with the different products and the decor items to get a feel for it all coming together. So I'm going to center my floor plan again just so you can see it all and get an idea of where we are in the workspace. If I go to my product drop down, and I'm going to select tables and chairs. Again, these are solid linens I'm selecting. We also have a category for specialty linens that you can select as well. You can see here I have some preset tables with chairs already grouped around it. But if I want to get really detailed and I want to really be able to customize my products and what chairs so that they look like what's going to be in my client's event, not just showing them placement, this is when I don't want to select a preset table. And I want to actually choose um, one of the tables myself. I drag and drop it in. And I'm going to zoom in again for you. Like I said in the beginning, I always go back and forth between zooming out and zooming in because I I just like to get a close-up of how it's going to look and place everything how I see fit. So here we go. Same thing with the doors. I'm going to open up this product attribute. I, I like this dimension. These are going to be the dimensions of the table in this event. So I'm not going to touch anything here. One thing that I want you to keep in mind is this distance from floor. When placing items on top, it always defaults to 2 feet 6 inches. But if you have a bar or maybe one of the high countertop tables, this is where you'll want to change the distance from floor of whatever object goes on top of that table. Colors, I'll go ahead and select a pink color. And I'm not going to assign a table number just yet, and you're going to see why in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply, and there you go. I already have one table in there. What I personally like to do, and again, it's everyone's own preference, is I like to set one table. Typically, all of the events that I have done and that I see a lot of people doing, the tables are either the same or they're alternating. So what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and I'll click on Chairs. I can drag and drop any one in from this library of items, and I'll just select this one and drag it in. And this is what I meant about the yellow arrow, seeing the front of it. The front of it tells me that's what goes next to the table. And I'm going to go ahead and keep dragging and dropping them in. And if I wanted to, I could change the frame color, the cushion color, you name it. And don't get me wrong, no one's going to actually want to drop in every single chair, especially if you have 10, 20, 30, 40 tables. So what I always say is set one table the way you want it, and let's pretend this is all set with all the chairs around it. You can put your center pieces on it, and I'll just drag one on to show you. Center pieces, and it could be multiple center pieces, one, your call. I can even put a place setting on it if I want. I'll go ahead and put one of those on for you as well. And again, it really helps me knowing where the front of the item is so I can place it. Well, let's say this table is completely set, and I want to now duplicate it and be able to place those all throughout my floor plan. All I do is click on this group item, and I'm going to drag and drop an entire square around whatever it is that I want duplicated. Now you can see they're all highlighted. I have two options. I can rotate all of the items by clicking the curve line. I can delete them by hitting the minus button or I can duplicate them by hitting the plus button. And while they're still highlighted, I move it. And I can do that as many times as I need to. So I'll go ahead and center the floor plan, and you can see it in there. Let's take a quick 3D view of this. And up here is always your loading icon. And we can walk through it. And you can actually see exactly what it looks like. So again, it's already starting to come together, and you can see how quickly this can go, especially once you get your room set the way it should be that resembles the venue that you're working at. And we go back into the 2D view, because there's a couple of other items that I really want to show you guys. 
The first one is table numbers. So important, and we also have the feature of being able to assign a seating chart, which is your catering staff is going to personally love you. So I'm going to zoom in again, and I'm going to click on a table, open up the item attributes, and go to table numbers. This is where I have a couple of different options. I can assign a table number or a name. Some people are going with names nowadays. Um, I'm going to do table one, and I can assign each, each person to it. So I can put my name. I can even get as detailed as my meal of choice. I can put Kim's. You get the idea. And hit apply. So what happens? You can't see it in a 2D view, right? Because guess what? The centerpiece is blocking it. Easy, easy. All you have to do is go over to the products tab. And I want to hide the center pieces. I want to keep them in my floor plan, but I want to be able to hide them what I want. And I just click on the eyeball right here. Click it on, click it off. Your choice. Same thing if I want to show the table numbers or I can hide the table numbers. Again, your choice. So labels, hide labels. So that's how the table numbers work. You can also do the same thing with the chairs. If you need to name each individual chair, you can do that as well. I could put my name, I could put what table I'm at, really, it's up to you. One thing that I hear from a lot of different event professionals is, I don't want to spend the time and input my client's seating chart. I know they're going to have so many changes to make, I don't want to do it. Well, that's where this share by email button comes into play. If I click on this, all I do is input whether it's maybe one of my assistants, one of my colleagues, even my client. I input their email address. You can customize the email however you want. Just be sure you do not touch this link. This link is unique to your floor plan and your event design that you create. And I hit the send button. Then whoever I send it to, my client for example, they get this email and they have that link. All they do is click on it and they're able to see exactly what I can see. And they can go ahead and assign their own seating chart and then save it to their account and email back. So very easy, very flexible. And keep in mind, because it is all web-based, your client, you can have meetings with your client and collaborate over the design, the setup, you name it, from anywhere in the world. You no longer have to have those in-person meetings. Um, you're able to have a ton more now by being flexible with your time and your physical location. So a couple of other, other items that I want to touch on that I know will be very helpful for you as you start designing events in the 3D Event Designer is one, this notes tab. Here you can type in any notes you want. They can be something very simple like begin cocktail hour at 6 p.m. or making a note of a specific design setup. Or it can be as detailed as you can paste your entire timeline. So you're probably wondering why the notes section is here, right? Well, if you click this PDF floor plan and notes button, it actually generates a PDF for you of everything you've done in 3D Event Designer that you can hand to your vendors for setup day. So because this, one, this floor plan isn't done yet, I'm going to show you an example of a different PDF from a different floor plan so you can see the full spectrum of what it's capable of. So let me go ahead and open that. And it is actually this PDF. And what you see here is you have a 2D floor plan and it, that it captures. And this is a design I created. And this was completely from scratch. So as you can see, I actually did an indoor, two indoor areas, an outdoor area. And I even input some partial walls to really give it what that menu looked like. The next item is the notes button. You can see with this floor plan, we actually input the entire timeline here so that everyone who's part of the event has the timeline in front of them in one concise document. And I'll keep scrolling down and show you what else is part of this. And keep in mind, you hit that PDF button, and this automatically creates it for you. You don't have to do anything additional. The next part of this PDF is the item list. The item list, it captures every single product that you put into your floor plan, the name of it, and an item and the quantity of each. So you can make sure as your rental companies are coming in, or if you are the rental company, is my inventory correct? Am I missing anything? You scroll down a little bit farther, and this is where you actually see the seating chart come into play. So it displays the seating chart two different ways, and it's the two ways I showed you. The first one is if you number or name the table, it shows all the people, and if you chose their meal of choice, 
you can put that in there as well. Really helpful for the caterers. The second option, which I'm going to scroll down to, and you may just want to do this for the HUD table, you may want to do it for everything, you may not want to do it at all, is actually name each individual person sitting at each chair and their meal of choice and what table that they're at. Um, the reason I did it for the HUD table is I'm going to be having for this event place cards at that HUD table. The escort cards are going to be for all the other tables. That's why I didn't assign a specific name to each seat. So that's really what our PDF floor plan and notes button comprises. I'm going to go ahead and go back into our floor plan real quick. And a couple of other items that I want to show you. Let's go back to the products over here. Um, you've all seen the full spectrum of products. We are constantly updating our database. We have it coming in the next week, week and a half, about 40 new products. They're always being updated. So one thing to keep in mind, the application is web-based. So the second we put it online, it's in your account, you have it. If there is a specific item that you need that's specific to you, we can get that designed and modeled. You have to contact us and send us dimensions and pictures, and we'll work through that. Um, so that always is an option as well. But the reason we made it web-based and made it the simple, easy drag and drop is to maximize your guys' time that you have and produce the best results and give you a competitive advantage. We don't want you spending tons of time having to design. So the only other item that I really need to show you, actually two, is one, the share on Facebook email button. If I click on that, it will allow me to share whatever design I have on Facebook. Keep in mind, don't do this for a lot of your um, clients, especially wedding ones. They want to keep their event secret. But if you're trying to promote an event, let's say EPA is putting on a chapter event for their members, this is a great way to generate hype. So that's what the share on Facebook button is for. And this last item, duplicate, I'm actually going to click this duplicate button. And as you can see over here, it added the words copy to it. What that tells me is, it saved this floor plan the way it is, and now this is a second floor plan of the same one. You want to do this if you want to create templates. So let's say you work at one, two, three, four venues consistently. Design the floor plan without all the chairs and decor and tables in it. Save a template. So let's just call this venue template. I would delete all of these products in here, make sure I have all the doors and windows and coloring set, and then I would save it. That way, when I go to launch the application and I go into my saved floor plan, I can easily go to my template, open it up, duplicate it, save it the name of my new event, and get started. Um, the other great thing with that is a lot of times you will have clients not knowing what setup they want in a specific setting, a specific venue, a specific outdoor space. So you having that flexibility of being able to view all your past designs with a simple click of a button, you can actually email them other designs of past events you've had to give them ideas. They're going to love you for it. So that, in a nutshell, that is our 3D event designer. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and jump back to our slides. There's a few other things I wanted to go ahead and touch on. So this next item is the lead capture widget. I'm sure a lot of you have heard us talk about it, whether it's through social media, you've emailed us, um, you name it. And what it is, is it helps convert more of your website visitors to leads. And as a business owner, this is so, so important. Um, so what it is, is it's not actually something that we fully always publicize on our website, but any of our quick planners or pro planners simply just need to shoot us an email and we will get this created for you. And what it is, is this, this form field you see right here, the picture customized to whatever you want, the text can be customized to whatever you want. We, of course, always have samples. And whatever information you want to capture, those form fields can be customized to the form fields that you would like to select. So you're saying, okay, this all sounds great, maybe a little confusing, what does it do for me? Well, you put this on your website. Someone that is coming to your website looking at you, considering you for an event, they'll see this. They'll see that you have this new offering. You can actually show them their, their new event, or their upcoming event, I should say, in realistic 3D. They don't have to have the stress of, 
okay, is their drawing going to make sense, or do I have to rip out all these pictures from magazines? Is the setup going to fit? Maybe the tables and chairs aren't. No, you're able to show it to them very, very easy with an online link. So they see this, they fill out their information, they hit the View Event Design button, and a sample event design opens. It can be one of our pre-modeled ones, it can be in a design you've already created, and that's what um, they see. At the same time they hit that View Event Design button, you actually get an email sent to you with all of the information that they filled out, notifying you to contact them to schedule meetings and have them become your customer, your client. So as you can see why I'm excited about the lead capture widget, we're always looking for new ways to convert more people to customers, and this is just one of those ways that EventClick and our 3D event designer is offering to our users. So lastly, I want to go ahead and show you just a couple of pre-models or a couple of designs that we've done, that some of our users have done, just to show you the full range and the flexibility of what you can create. So if I go, I'm going to go into an outdoor space. This is actually created by one of our users. And the reason I want to show you this is it's a combination of a few outdoor spaces and an indoor one. And as you can see here, it's just to show the client the layout. They, the client did not care about all of the details of the flowers or exactly what the place settings are going to look like. So if I go into the 3D view, it's going to let you walk through it and really give you a feeling of what it's going to look like when you have that event take place. And one thing I don't think I pointed out is whenever you're outside, you can always see inside into the event space if there is an indoor floor plan. The reason for that is clients love being able to, they're visual, right? Like you, like me, they're all visual. They want to get a feel for where they actually are on that property. So that's why we enabled that option. If for some reason you don't want it to show into it, all you have to do is drag in a freeform wall and it'll hide it for you. So you have both ways of doing it. Um, the next one that I want to show you, and I'll just show you one more before we wrap it up and open it up for Q&A, is let's go into this one. This isn't a pre-modeled venues floor plan, and we actually got more detailed with the centerpieces, the dessert bars, and the color scheme. So if I go into a 3D view, you will see what this looks like. So it's really to show you that you can get as detailed as you want, or it can be as simple as you want for just layout, completely up to you. Um, and while we're here in this 3D view, this screenshot button that you see, if I click on it, it allows me to save a JPEG image of whatever view I'm looking at. So if your client just, they don't want to log online, they're not at a, a place that has internet, let's say, and they just want to see a few snapshots, go ahead and save a couple of these from different viewpoints in the room and email it to them, and you're good to go. So let's once again go back to our the template. And um, that really concludes the live demo. A few things that I want to point out. Um, for events, click for our 3D event designer. If you are an EPA member, you get a 25% savings. So make sure that you log into the member center if that's something you're interested in. And non-EPA members, if you are still interested in using the 3D event designer with your clients and for your business, go ahead and go to um, Event Planners Association website, and on their homepage, there's a link to go ahead and register as well. And if you're on this webinar and you're not an EPA member and you're looking to become one, just visit the Event Planners Association website. All of the different membership levels are listed on there. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to them at info at eventplannersassociation.com or at the number you see listed on your screen. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions, so please type your questions that you have into the chat window, and we will be sure to address all of these right now. And let me go ahead and pull it up and see if there's any questions. Okay, I actually see one question that just came in. They said, I work mainly at five venues. Do I have to create the floor plan each time? No, this goes actually back to what we discussed at the end. You can create a template, so go in, create the venue, 
um, exactly how it should be with the dimensions, the colors, the doors, the windows. Save it as the venue's name and add template onto the end just so when you go into your floor plans, you know this is a template and then you can get started. And let me actually see if I can unmute all the lines at this point so that we can have everyone ask questions. All right, we're starting to unmute the lines. In just a second, everyone will be unmuted. And if you have a question, go ahead and ask it. If you see more that popped in, thank you. But since we're unmuting the lines, go ask as much. Christine? Yes? Hi, this is Yolanda. Yolanda, are you there? Yes, I'm here. What was your question? Oh, it's, uh, can you hear me? Okay, uh, I was the person who wrote to you in regards of uh, the membership or... Wow. Okay, can you hear me now, Christine? Yes. Okay. It's all upside down. I mean, you see how turning point has their own design? Okay. Um, I wrote to you in regards of um, having access to the one, ones with I sign. I'm not going to go down that road, but, but do you know how much each of those things are? There's so much noise in the background. <laughs> Can you type your question into that chat box and I'll go ahead and answer it? Or if you can raise your hand, there should be a little raise hand icon. I can go ahead and unmute that person who's raising their hand. So um, let's see, I'm going to just unmute Yolanda at this point. Okay, Yolanda, you should be the only one unmuted. Do you want to go ahead and ask me that question again? Yes, Christine. Um, as I wrote to you before, I went through the the, the um, YouTube presentation, and then I, I went to to see what were the options in order to to sign. You have uh, the limited uh, uh, limited offer and the limited one. My question, basically, you answer my question through you through the email. But uh, now I have a question. If I sign for the unlimited uh, uh, option and at any time I want to to cancel I hope I don't want to cancel but I, this is a question that I have and any time I want to cancel uh, how is it going to be done it's it's an monthly fee uh, instant payment that you will charge to the credit card or do I need to make my payments every month so the payments are automatic each month so if you decide okay. you either want to cancel it or maybe there's a couple of months where you don't need it you log uh -huh. into your account, and at the top of your account, there's um, a button that says My Account, and you can go ahead and just flip, change it to the free My Planner, and then that way you won't lose any of your floor plans, but once you're ready to start designing again, you can go ahead and upgrade again. Okay. There will be any, any, any additional charge for uh, signing again? Nope. It's all month to no. month. So once you're ready okay. to go again, it'll just... It'll charge you whether it's the Quick Planner or the Pro Planner at that price for the next 30 days. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Christine. Of course. And everyone, um, Riolanda brought up a great point. We have YouTube. We have videos on YouTube, and they're also accessible from both from the Events Click website. If you ever have um, any questions on how an item works. You can refer to those YouTube videos. They walk you step by step through everything. But after that, too, if you have any questions, shoot us an email at info@eventsquick.com. We'll be sure to address all of your questions. And if you ever need a, a training after that, um, we can get that scheduled as well. So, does anyone else have any questions? Go ahead and raise your hand on here, or type it into the chat box. And I just saw one other one come on. They said, I'm an EPA member. How do I get that 25% discount? You go ahead and you log into the EPA member center. 
and there will be a link there that will take you directly to the Events Click Sign Up page that will have that 25% discount. And while we have everyone still on the line, I want to remind everyone, or maybe this is the first time you're hearing it, but in the beginning of June, EPA and Events Click are going to launch an event design competition, so that will be really fun. And we will be announcing the winners um, at this bash. So if any of you are there, definitely stop by and see the winning design. Um, let's see. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. I'm going to unmute Jolene Bruner. And I apologize if I said that wrong. Can you go ahead and ask your question? Oh, no. That's fine. Uh, my question is the membership. I don't know if I missed that, but what, how much is the membership? And I'm in Texas, so is that um, the offer? Is it a, a group here in Texas, or is this just a member? How does this work? Yep, let me. I'm going to unmute Kim, who heads up EPA. Kim, you're unmuted. You want to go ahead and answer the question about the EPA membership? Sure. You're talking about the EPA membership versus the events yes. click? Yes. Okay. Um, we have several different membership options. And they're all on our website. Okay. Um, and I, I'm I'm happy to go through them here with you, but I I, I don't. Can, know I that can look at the website. That would be great, and I would be happy to answer any questions. Feel free to just call me. Uh, number is is eight six six three eight zero three three seven two, and I'll be happy to go through it with you. All right. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Perfect. And Kim, thanks for clarifying everyone. What you see on the screen for the EPA phone number, it is actually 866, not the 888. So keep that in mind. And you can also find that on the Event Planners Association website. Um, a couple other questions. It looks like people have actually looked at events quick previously. And yes, we do have checklists and budgeters that are specific to your event type. So you can go ahead and use that as well. If you sign up for an Events Click account, not only do you get access to the 3D Event Designer, but you get access to the event-specific checklist and budgeters, and then also to view any featured venues and vendors. All right, do we have anyone else raising their hand? Well, perfect. Well, we actually recorded this webinar. so. Um, Kim is going to be going ahead and sending out an email early next week with a recorded version, so you can go ahead and reference that at a later point in time. And if you have any additional questions, if it's regarding the 3D Event Designer, go ahead and email myself at info at eventsclick.com. Or if you have questions directly for EPA, go ahead and email info at eventplanersassociation.com. And I just saw three more questions come in, so I'm going to unmute first Monique Daniels. Do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Um, hi, I just want to know, will I have access to the PowerPoint when the webinar is over? I'd like to share this information and be able to reference back to it. Yes, you, I'm sorry, you kind of faded out there at the end. You asked if you'll have access to that PowerPoint as well? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes, we will make sure that you have access when that email goes out early next week to the recorded webinar, that you have access to both that as well as the PowerPoint. Okay, thank you so much. Of course. All right, I just needed Monique. Um, let's see. Robielle McCormick, I just unmuted you. You want to go ahead and ask your question? It looks like you're actually self-muted, so you're going to have to unmute yourself, and then you should be able to ask your question. All right, are you there? I can't hear you, so I'm going to go ahead and put you back on mute. If you want to type your question in or shoot me an email, I'm more than happy to get that answered for you. And then Stephanie, I, um, Stephanie Erb, I'm a, I just unmuted you. You want to go ahead and ask your question? Yes, my question is about power outlets, projectors, drop down screens, um, just all of the things that my normal clients are really asking for when I'm looking at all the features you have, you have, you know, the place cards, but um, a large part of when I'm walking into an event, I'm looking at, you know, where's where's my speaker going to be? Where's our screen going to be? Um, so the nuts and bolts of what I need are a little different, I guess. Yeah, 
Yep, let me actually go ahead and address that. So can you see my screen right now? I just yes. pulled back up the floor plan. So we have this under a few different options. As far as the AV equipment goes, that's where you're going to get your projectors, your screens, your drop down. Um, as far as speakers go, that is actually under, where is that, our music, musical instruments. We have the speakers, we have the microphones, um, and whatnot. And then under lighting is where we'll actually have the up lights and the pin spots. Um, what was the other item that you mentioned? Really, outlet. Because a lot of the times what, you know, what my client is looking at is something is being feasible versus what actually is feasible due to outlets and just, you know, undesirable areas. Say, for example, you know, that's really the pathway that, you know, the people bringing in the food, that, that's where they're going to be traveling. So we really can't have a screen here. Um, so there's not really, you know, anything I, I did I'm seeing that you could block off, um, but it would be an undesirable area, like close to a bathroom or something like that. Um, you know, because looking at a screen like this, it, it looks like, hey, you know, anything can go anywhere. The, the possibilities are endless, but really not so much <laughs> when you're actually in the room. You know, you're exactly right. So I'm going to go back to this floor plan of where you actually can create it yourself. And do you remember how I mentioned we're adding quite a few new products in the next week or two? Yeah. One of the items are actually we have outlets and exit signs coming on, so you can go ahead and put those on there. And then the other feature as far as if you know, let's say there's going to be a bathroom somewhere, or maybe it's the kitchen, entr the kitchen entrance, so you don't mm -hmm. want to pay a dessert setup to go there. Go ahead and name that entrance. That's what the labels are for. And so it marks it. So when your client's looking at it, they're, they're thinking to themselves, okay, that's where the kitchen is. Avoid that area. Okay. And you have one for a dance floor as well? We have, yes, we have dance, where are my dance floors? We have dance floors here. You can always resize them and always change the color of each. We have the wood ones, change the um, light to dark, or actually the acrylic, gold, silver, pewter, you name it. That's great. Thank you. Yep, of course. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mute you, Stephanie. And then, Robiel, I'm going to unmute you again. It looks like your hand got raised one more time. Are you able to hear us? Okay, um, go ahead and type it in again. Sorry about that. And I think that covers it. So perfect, everyone. If you guys have additional questions later, please feel free to reach out. We're always here for you guys. And I just want to thank you again for joining our webinar. And we look forward to having you become both Events Click and ETA members. So thank you.